Hey guys, this is Eli and welcome back to another Minecraft video. And in this video we're going to be looking at item splitters, sometimes known as item dividers. These things typically divide your items 50-50 into two separate streams. Now there are a ton of designs already out there, some of them are extremely basic and simple and others are massively complicated. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at my top 4 favourite designs. So let's get started. Design number one is arguably the simplest and most basic item splitter in Minecraft, and it's just a double chest placed on top of two hoppers. And if we throw a full stack of items into the double chest and we fast forward, we should see that half the items have appeared on the left hand side and the other half have appeared on the right hand side. Now although this design is very simple and cheap to build, it does have some fundamental flaws. The first being that we can't add items one at a time, because if we do, they tend to favour only one side of this design. The second is that this design is not modular, so if we have a big storage system full of item sorters, storage silos and hopper lines, this system will not work, and we can check that out by placing a hopper on the top here and then throwing in a bunch of items there and it basically behaves as adding a single item into this chest every time which of course favours one side. The second design is one of my favourites, it's the minecart bobbing back and forth item splitter. I don't know what you want to call this thing but I do love it, I have built it several times in my single player series. And the great thing about this design is it is modular so you can install it into your existing systems and all you need is a hopper line on the top, you can have your items pass through the hopper line and they should get divided 50-50 into these two sides. Now the one thing I will point out about this design is it is painfully slow and I think it's because the minecart spends two thirds of its time not in contact with this hopper so it does take a long time to drain through. And I guess the other problem with this is it does use a minecart so it is running 24-7, it can create a bit of lag, it is quite noisy and annoying and I guess occasionally the minecart can get stuck when you unload and reload the chunks and sometimes it can just completely vanish, I have no idea why but the minecart will just disappear into the void never to be seen again. So do build this one at your own risk. Now the third design is actually one of my own designs, so if you stick around to the end of the video we will be covering this one in a tutorial. Now for me, I absolutely love this design, it's my go-to design, I'll build it in about 95% of situations. And it works just like the other ones, we can throw a stack of items into this chest and they should get evenly distributed between these two output chests. Now I think the main reason I love this one is because it's completely silent, there's no moving parts, and it's actually pretty lag friendly. If you know hopper systems, you know that they can suffer from lag issues, especially if you play in a server where you have a lot of redstone around, it can have some problems. But with some modifications to this which we will cover in the tutorial, it can be extremely lag friendly. And just to prove a point, those of you who follow my single player series will know that my storage area is probably one of the laggiest places you can create in Minecraft. And as you can hear, we've already activated everything down below, we have a basement full of redstone, we have all of these storage silos with redstone, we have dual automatic super smelters, we have all of this storage area. So this is extremely laggy, I've built one of these mock-up item splitters here so we can throw in 64 items and we should get these evenly distributing even with all this lag. So if we just check this out now, we should get 32 items in this side, yep, and then 32 in the bottom one. So this seems to be working perfectly. We haven't even needed any of the modifications here, so I think in theory you will never need them, but we'll definitely cover that in the tutorial just in case. The fourth and final design is again one of my own designs, so we'll also be covering this one in the tutorial. Now this thing is the creme de la creme of item splitters. It's very similar in principle to the previous design, with the exception of containing a memory circuit hidden at the back. Now the main reason for this is so far all of the item splitters we've seen, they work by throwing in a stack of items and we get that 50-50 split between these two chests. But they do have one flaw, in that if we just added one item and we waited a few moments, added a second item, they would both tend to favour the same chest. And the reason for that is that this thing tends to default back to an original state which will always go to one chest. Now by adding in this memory circuit we can actually remember where the items go. So we'll remember that one gets sent into this chest so the next item that comes along is going to get sent to the other chest. And then this will just switch back and forth between these two chests. So if you're like me and you have OCD, you're very anal about these things, you want to know that you've got a true 50-50 split, then this is the design for you. And we can actually do a bit of a test here, if we just throw in a couple items, you just wait a few 
moment to throw in another one. We can actually just do whatever you want with this and uh, we should still get this perfect 50-50 split. So we got three in there and three in there. And again, just to test this design in the laggiest place in the universe, we have this built in my single player series. So let's just throw in a couple items into this chest. We've got one, two, three, and four. So we waited for a small gap between that and we should get two and two. Yep, so this definitely works under very laggy conditions. If you want to build design number three, then it is surprisingly resource light and pretty easy to do. You should be able to adapt this to any situation you need. Now, firstly, you got to start off with some kind of hopper line. It doesn't need to look like this. You can adapt it for your situation, but you will need these three hoppers on top of each other. Now, firstly, take a block coming out of this middle hopper, do a comparator on top of the block, and then you want to do a dropper on the side here. And then a hopper going into that dropper. In the dropper, place a single item. Doesn't matter what it is, just as long as there's one item. Now below here, you wanna do two blocks coming out there. You wanna do two comparators on top of each block. Now in the side here, you wanna do two hoppers facing into each other. So place them like so. Then you wanna do two blocks on the top. Now into this hopper, you just wanna place a single item. Again, it doesn't matter what it is, just as long as it's one item. And finally, you just want one block here with a comparator on top. And believe it or not, that is everything done. This system should be working fine. So we can do another test here. We'll just throw in 64 redstone dust and we should be getting an exact 50-50 split here. Now, anyone who's played Minecraft for long enough knows that hopper systems can be a little bit unreliable, especially if you're playing on a very fast computer or a very laggy server. Sometimes the items move so fast through the hoppers that they don't stick around long enough to produce a redstone output from a comparator. So if this issue affects you, then there's a simple fix. You can put a redstone torch on top of that dropper, do a block on top of it, another block there and one more block there. And then just do a line of redstone dust along the top. Now what this should do is this should lock this hopper permanently so we'll force items to stop inside this hopper and produce a redstone output. Now occasionally you won't have enough items coming in and you'll find the items are only going to one of your chest because they're traveling so slowly. You can do another fix for this by creating a small backup inside this hopper. If you just place a block here, another block here, do a redstone dust here, what it means is when we get redstone output coming from this uh, comparator, this will lock this hopper and we should get this small backup there. So only one item will be allowed into this hopper any given time. So these two fixes could fix potential problems, but in all my testing, I've got a perfect 50-50 split. So I don't think you're gonna need this at all. As mentioned earlier, the fourth design is very similar to the third, with the exception of this memory state added at the back. Now, just to explain how this all works, we have two hoppers here facing into each other, and we have one item inside this hopper. Now, this item is allowed to move back and forth, effectively giving us two states, one where the item is in the right and one where the item is in the left. Now, in order to do this, we need to move this back and forth only once every time we have one item pass through this hopper. So we need to unpower both these hoppers by exactly four redstone ticks. Now four redstone ticks is the magic number. It's the time it takes for one item to move from one hopper to the other. Now in order to do that we need to create this inverted rising edge monostable circuit which is effectively just a dropper and a hopper and when we pass an item from the dropper into the hopper it takes exactly four redstone ticks to pass back. So that should unpower this block, unpower this hopper as well for exactly four redstone ticks and it allows us to toggle the power state of this block which unlocks this hopper. To build this, start off with a similar shape as we had before. Again, you only need these three hoppers in the middle. You can actually change the rest of the design if needed. Now place a block in the middle. We're gonna do a comparator on top of that block. This is gonna go into a solid block. This time we wanna use a half slab on the side and then do a redstone dot just there. Next up is our dropper hopper combo coming out of this side here. And then place one item inside this dropper. We want to take a comparator output coming from the dropper, so we want to place a block there, comparator on the top. Next up is our hopper combo, so we just want two hoppers there, they're going to be facing into each other. And then do a solid block on the top, and then a piece of redstone dust just here. Now again, we want to put one item in here, it doesn't matter which hopper, just one item there. And we want to take a comparator output coming from this hopper. And we need to bring this signal all the way around to the front, so we're going to take two blocks there, three blocks along and one block there. 
Next up, we want a repeater going into that block. We want a repeater coming out of this comparator and then just connect this with redstone dust. Now we don't want this connection here. So to sever that, we just want to place a single block there. Finally, we need to create a circuit which goes underneath. So we need to take two blocks along here and we want one block up. Place a redstone torch on the side here and then three redstone dust just underneath. And this is actually an OR gate here. So we have this, uh, this block is powered by default. So we need this torch to be off and we need this comparator to be off in order to unlock this bottom hopper. Well, that's all for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you found this helpful, then feel free to hit that like button. And if you want to keep up with my latest tutorials or my single player series, then feel free to subscribe. I've been Eli. Thanks for watching.